Hello friends, this is Growl. In today's video, I want to talk about some specific mechanics with the way Resto Druid spells work to help improve your understanding and heal more efficiently. These questions come up occasionally on my stream and I wanted to address them thoroughly in a video since I believe part of healing with confidence is having a solid grasp of how all of your abilities interact. First, I want to talk about snapshotting. Almost no mechanics in WoW function with snapshotting, so it's something that you should never be thinking about. The idea behind snapshotting is that the spells you cast will remember the buffs you had on you when you cast them, and continue for the entire duration of the spell. An example might be, if you used Eflo when you had Bloodlust and a Cape Intellect proc, even after those buffs wore off, your Eflo will continue being buffed by the Haste and the Intellect. But this is not how healing or damage over time spells work in WoW. They update dynamically. What I mean by that is, as your intellect, haste, or any other stat changes, your hots also become more or less powerful. This might seem a bit disorienting, however, it's actually much simpler this way. You don't have to hold on to spells waiting for a proc or renew them once you get the proc. You can just use them as normal and procs will boost your spells already active. As soon as you place Life Bloom on yourself, the Photosynthesis talent will start kicking in, and all HOTs already applied will begin healing faster. The Ever Rising Tide Major will be giving a healing boost to all currently active HOTs as soon as you start building up stacks of it. And most importantly, your Mastery is boosting all of your HOTs equally, not just the last one. Next, I want to talk about the Pandemic Window. When you place a HOT on yourself, it applies for the full duration. And if you reapply it again, it adds some to the total duration, but not much. So how does it work? The highest possible duration for a healing or damage over time effect is actually 130% of what is listed on the tooltip. Knowing this, we actually have a very clear window in which we can maintain 100% uptime on our spells without having to be super precise. When a spell is under 30% of its duration left, for example, 5 seconds with Rejuve, we can reapply it to add another 15 full seconds. This is the most efficient way for us to maintain 100% uptime on our abilities when needed, most commonly Rejuve, Life Bloom, Sunfire, and Moonfire. You should be refreshing your Sunfire and Moonfire in this window whenever possible and renewing your HOTs on fights that require high uptime, such as Galvast or Lord and Lady Waycrest. There are two interactions I want to mention regarding this window. First, that efflorescence is technically counted as a summon and not a heal over time, so it does not follow these rules. You can cast efflo over and over, but it's not going to go over its initial duration of 30 seconds. This means for maximum efflo efficiency, you should be waiting until it's fully expired before renewing. Life Bloom has an on expiration effect, which gives a small heal. Recasting Life Bloom immediately will not trigger the heal. However, if you refresh near the end of its duration during the pandemic window, it will trigger its bloom early. This means you can choose to take that ending heal from life bloom a few seconds early, which isn't something I play around often, but it's at least good to know that you aren't losing efficiency on life bloom when you use the pandemic window. Lastly, I want to talk about specific mastery interactions with a few different druid spells. First, it's important to note that Mastery only applies to Druid spells, not Essences or Trinkets. This is why you see most healing Essences and Trinkets not effective on Resto Druid, because they're not boosted by the Mastery. Tranquility applies a stacking heal over time effect on your party the longer you channel it. Although the Hot can stack up to 5 times, it only counts for one Mastery application so you aren't getting a huge mastery boost on targets after you channel your Trank. Scenarian Ward applies to the target you cast on it, but doesn't activate until damage is taken. While it is in this state of applied but not activated, it does not count towards mastery, so it does not boost your healing until it activates, but once the target does take damage, it functions as normal. There aren't many situations when you're needing to heal somebody that isn't taking damage. However, the last boss in Temple of Sethralis comes to mind. You shouldn't be using Scenarian Ward on the boss because it does not boost your healing. Grove Tending adds a heal over time effect to Swiftman, which works with Mastery. Unfortunately, the Mastery bonus from Grove Tending does not apply to the Swiftman that is cast to apply it. 
this doesn't change the way you play in any way but it's good to know it's still a great trait to use for boosting healing after swiftman that goes over all the mechanics i wanted to cover if you have any questions about how spells traits or items interact leave them down in the comments and we'll see if i have to make a part two happy keying